Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're going to be checking out this professional endoscope. Stay tuned. So this is the depth stretch, I think that's how we say it, I'm not too sure, something like that. It is the DS450 model. It is IP67 waterproof, it has an IPS screen, it has a built-in battery, and it has six bright LED lights on the actual scope itself. So I've had this for a few weeks. I've used it quite a few times on stuff I would never expect to use something like this on. If I'm honest. Now, I've had these before in the past. I've had the ones that you connect to a mobile phone or a tablet or a laptop. But I thought I'll get myself one of these because I use this quite a lot. And I quite like the fact I don't have to have a mobile phone device or a laptop or anything at hand. I can just bring this piece of equipment and everything I need is in one nice small box. Now, I've had the ones I plug into a mobile phone device. Now, quite simply, they plug into the bottom of your phone, usually where your charger port goes, and it powers the camera and the video footage is recorded directly to your phone. I've actually did some videos on YouTube using them. In fact, I'll put a link up above on the Mini Cooper. I've used it for maybe an hour or so, and it's still holding charge. You don't have to charge this before you store it. It should last a long time. In fact, I've not even taken the screen protector off. So this is super simple to use. You quite simply plug in the USB cable at the top. You have a power button on the side, press and hold, and it'll power up. And within a few seconds, the camera is on and you are ready to go. This has a built-in battery and to charge it, quite simply attach the USB cable in the bottom, connect this to your wall socket or a plug. Comes with a few attachments as well. The magnetic one is probably the one I would use the most. The hook is actually handy. I've actually used this to hook up a wire through a wall cavity. It's not exactly what it's intended for, but you screw this onto the end, put it down the inside of the cavity of the wall, and you can connect the hook up the cable and pull the cable up the wall. I've used it for that twice, so that is actually quite nice to have. We have this guy here as well, which is good for looking around corners. And finally, the magnetic one. For some reason, my kit came with two. So it's not a bad thing, but just bear that in mind, you should only get the one, not the two. A memory card comes in the case. You insert the memory card into the bottom. What is quite impressive is the actual length of the cable. It's over 16 foot of cable. The things I use it for, this is enough length. So I kind of just leave it like this, hold this in my hand like so, and put it into what I need to put it into, and it works a treat. So one issue I was concerned about was does the battery last? If I charge this and not use it for two or three weeks, will I come back to this and it'd be completely dead? I'd have to then charge it before I use it. Obviously that is not ideal. The last thing you want is to be waiting for this to charge when you need to use it in a rush, but so far for me, the battery's held up really well. As for the menu, it is really simple. You basically have your resolution, which is five megapixels or 1080p. You have your time off feature. You can set your date and time, your language, you can format the memory card in the machine and you can reset the settings. So the other options are the lights on the front of the camera itself. You can turn them down or turn them up. You have a built-in torch. So pressing this button at the top here turns on a torch on the rear. You press a button on the top right hand side once and your photograph is saved. You press and hold and it starts recording video. Simple as that. And to play back your videos, this button down here, just press and hold, and then press to play it. And as you can see, the footage that we've just filmed is played back. You can also look through all your other videos and photographs. And then to return back to camera mode, press now the button, and we're back recording. It is pretty simple to use, very little buttons, some nice features, it records very good quality video. It doesn't record audio, but that's not a problem. But yeah, guys, that is the device in a nutshell. I have literally just got this a few hours ago. I have not seen inside. So this will be the first look. And let's get the camera and have a peek inside. Let's go into the top and see what we see. I think you guys will agree this can give you a fantastic image of the inside of somewhere that you just can't get access to. Now, for me, looking at the top of the cylinders, this is fantastic. This is this is just what you need. The piston's actually at the top, so if we just 
as you can see the piston comes up so if we just put the piston at the bottom there or we can get right inside have a good look around now that's actually quite impressive that's pretty decent inside there as you can see you can go right down piston seems to be in good shape You can see the intake. And there's the exhaust. So yeah, as you can see, this is a great advantage. Being able to get deep down inside without actually removing anything. So what I use this for usually is engines. This guy here is a Ford Mustang engine. This will be on the channel shortly. <laughs> it was going to be a rebuild, but as you'll find out in the video soon to come, I don't know if that's going to be possible. I haven't actually been inside this yet. I've had a, a look down using a flashlight, kind of. That's probably what is best I've actually been inside. So, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to find. Hence the reason why this won't be a rebuild project. It's, well, that, that's a separate video but basically you're probably going to notice a lot of rust and pitting and probably even some damage inside of here so let's hook this guy up get it inside and have a look so let's go up our cylinder one <laughs> like i say guys this is the first time i've actually been inside of this and it's well, actually, I mean, yeah, it's not great, is it? <laughs> but it's not as bad as I expected. Let's go on to number two. Yeah, it's quite a lot of pitting. So as you can see, you can see pitting up here. The top of the piston looks to be in very bad shape. And the third. This one's almost at the top. Looks, it looks pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie. This guy here. Let's have a look at the fifth one. So you can kind of see how much play that I've actually had. I'm trying to get this thing freed up. I mean, the quality, guys, is just. It's so impressive to actually see this on a screen. So let's go into the 6-1. Now the 6-1 is the, well, in fact, actually, the ATF is still, it's still there. It's actually still full right to the, right to the top. So we're not going to be able to, yeah, can't actually get inside that one. That's actually interesting because I basically, I put ATF in all these probably a year or so ago. And as you can see, these guys here, these are bone dry. So that's all leaked down and it's dried out. But that one is still full after at least a year of sitting. So it probably is stuck rings, which is what I suspected was the issue. But, um, you know, actually looking at this, I expected to see the top of the piston. That's the piston here. I assume the wall would be as bad as that. So this engine has sat here for a couple of years now, and the reason I haven't really did anything with it, I was going to fully rebuild it, sandblast it, do loads of work to it, but I basically put some ATF down these and left it a few days, came back, couldn't turn it over, left it a few months, came back, couldn't turn it over, it is seized. I expected, because I used a flashlight, like I said, and I expected the, the cylinders just completely unusable basically they don't seem too bad that is the beauty of something like this now without this i kind of lost all hope for this but using this little tool here it's actually given me the uh, the motivation to actually progress on with this project one of the feature which i quite like is the fact you can actually remove the camera and use this as just a portable device to play back the videos so as you can see here we are watching back the footage that we just recorded and it's, it's just 
It's a great tool guys, it really is. I wasn't planning on doing a review on this. It's something I just bought and was going to use. Like I say, I've had a few of these in the past which hook up to your mobile phone. Now, with the mobile phones, one thing I will say is if this gets scratched and damaged, I'm not too bothered. It's at the end of the day, it's a tool for the garage. Basically, connecting this to your phone, this is what you get, essentially. It has a kind of little box built into it of a, a few buttons where you can adjust the LED brightness. But basically, this is what you'd get if you buy a standalone phone device version. What I don't like about the phone device versions is this cable is very stiff. It's very rigid and it doesn't really, it kind of fights you the whole way when you're trying to use it. The slightest movement on this end can just pull the whole entire lot. Your phone is attached here. Filming the Mini Cooper video, my phone fell on the floor twice because moving the camera, when you're focusing on the screen, you're too busy trying to move this around to get the best angle, pulling, and the phone falls off the car. If this falls on the floor, it'll scratch. Might get a few chips and stuff on it, but it's a garage tool. I don't really mind. But when my expensive mobile phone hits the ground, it's another story. It wasn't that expensive. It was only about 15, 20 pounds more than the actual mobile phone version. But I will get a link and I'll put it in the description for you guys if you want to check it out. I wasn't planning on doing a review and it's not your typical fully in-depth review. But if you're in a garage or if you're working on cars in the driveway or if you're on something like this, you're going to cover in oil and grease because that is another issue that I found wearing gloves, removing the inlet manifold, your hands get caked up with carbon. I was filthy. The car was filthy. Everything was filthy. So as a result, my mobile phone was also filthy. As I said before, once this gets scratched and damaged, I don't really care. As long as I can see the screen, I don't really care what the actual unit looks like, which is the great thing about this whole all-in-one unit. So I'm not saying get this one. There's many other brands out there. This is just another version, another copy of another copy, but I'm really happy. It's, I really have no complaints. For the price you pay, you get a lot for your money. So like always, please like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.